Hi friends, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So this is the phase one series for your banking exams. And in this series particularly, I have a very, uh, very interesting questions that I want to share with you. So let's begin this session. But the students who are coming for the first time can subscribe and hit this bell notification. Also, you can join this telegram group where you can ask your queries or, uh, from your mentors directly. And you can also enjoy the free quizzes that we provide on this group. So here we have our first question of the day. Which company has got the contract to install automatic fare collection system gates at all metro stations in Delhi under the National Common Mobility Card Services? So what is this National Common Mobility Card, so card? and what does this whole contract mean that we will understand a minute later but first of all let's discuss the answer of this question. So which com company has got this contract? It is Bharat Electronics Limited. So this Bharat Electronics Limited has got this contract. Now guys, this news is related to India's first driverless metro train that has been inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi very recently and you must have heard about it. So this first driverless train was inaugurated in on the Delhi metros magenta line i hope that you all know this thing and if you don't then you should be aware of this fact it's a very minor fact so do keep it in mind now while inaugurating the first driverless car <coughs> sorry prime minister narendra modi has also inaugurated the national common mobility card services on airport express line of delhi metro So guys, these services are operational on this line and on all the metro stations, these services will become operational by the year 2022. So this is the fact from where this news has come up. Now guys, what is this National Common Mobility Card? <coughs> Nandan Nilekani Committee. So Nandan Nilekani Committee was set up by RBI in the year 2019 in order to suggest measures to promote digital payments or we can say in order to make India a cashless economy that is the motto being chased by RBI and the central government. So this committee was formed and Nandan Nilekani committee in its recommendations have uh, has suggested this national common mobility card. So this is one fact. Now what is this national mobility card, common mobility card? This card basically, uh, your, under this initiative, your smartphone will be turned into your card or basically through your smartphone you can make payments at metros, buses or railways. And then through this, in this manner, your smartphone will become your transit card like we have the metro cards. So this card is nothing but your smart phone, which will enable you to make payments at metros, buses or railways. So in this manner, two motos will be served. First motto is the government's motto, one nation, one mobility card. So through this one mobility card, that is your smartphone, all the, you can avail all the commutation services. Second purpose is the digital economy. So when you are making payment through your smartphone, obviously cash, cash transactions will be reduced and we are mo mo moving towards the digital economy. So these are the two purposes that this national common mobility card service aims to serve. Now remember this thing on Delhi Metro, these services will be provided by the year 2022 and the contract for installing the automatic fare collection system has been given to Bharat Electronics Limited. Now what is this automatic fare collection system? You must have come across the gates that we used to enter, use to enter in the metros and to exit in the metros by using our metro card. So in similarly new uh, gates, new AFC gates will be, uh, will be developed by Bharat Electronics Limited which will use this national common mobility card to allow you to enter or exit the premise once you have travelled to your destination 
destination. So that's all for this question. I hope that you have understood all the points related to this question. Now, remember this thing that this is the Nandan Nilekani committee that has suggested, that has recommended this national common mobility card, which was, and this committee was formed in 2019. It has submitted its recommendation to make India a cashless economy. Now my question is for you is that you have to tell me the chair of Bharat Electronics Limited. So that's all for this question. Now I'm moving towards our second question. So this is a very simple question. Who has become the youngest mayor of the country after her election to the Thiruvananthapuram Municipal Corporation? So this municipal corporation is in Kerala. And a person that is the answer is the 21 year old girl that has become the mayor and she is the youngest mayor of India, youngest mayor in India. Who is that person? It is Arya Rajendran. So remember this thing, she belongs to Communist Party of India, Marxist. So this is the party from uh, which she belongs and she is the mayor of this corporation. Do remember this thing as well. So here this question ends I has, as I told you that it is a very simple question. When is the first ever international day of epidemic preparedness observed? So basically recently United Nations has announced to observe this international day of epidemic preparedness as we all are facing the pandemic of coronavirus and recently the mutation of coronavirus has come in on the forefront. So I would like to advise you guys stay safe, stay healthy and keep going on your studies. Now as far as this question is concerned, so the answer of this question is December 27. On December 27 in the year 2020 we observed the International Day of Epidemic Preparedness. Now related to this day there are no, not many facts that have been presented by UN and when these facts will be presented in the future I will tell you through spotlight as well as through this session. So for the time being it's this, this much only that this is the first ever day that has been observed by the United Nations. Who has won the DRDO scientist of the year award 2018? So you must be thinking that why is this 2018 award here? The reason behind this is that this award has been announced recently and will be presented to the winner in the year 2020. So who is the person? It is option B, Hemant Kumar Pandey. Who is the scientist at Defense Institute of Bioenergy Research. So do remember the institute where uh, this person is employed at present. Now why has he be been given this award? He has been given this award in the field of herbal medicine. So he has been accredited for developing uh, the herbal medicines and his contribution in that field has been recognized through this award. So that's all for this award. But my question for you is that guys we have come across DRDO very often due to the new launches that DRDO do. Now my question to you is that do you know where DRDO is located? So this is your question. If you know then do tell me in the comment section that where is this DRDO located? And who is the chief of DRDO? It is G. Satish Reddy. So I have told you the chief. Now your task is to find out the headquarters. Next question is about awards. Who has won the player of the year 2020 at Global Soccer Awards 2020? So first of all, these awards are given by Dubai Sports Council. So remember the organization that gives this award. In 2020, this award has been won by Cristiano Ronaldo. Now there are other awardees as well in different categories. So let us uh, look at them as well. So here the categories and the winners are there. Player of the year, Ronaldo. Club of the year, Bayern Munich. 
coach of the year this person player of the year century 2001 to 2020 again ronaldo club real madrid then coach of the century joseph and agent of the century then this george mens so these are the awardees that you have to pay attention to and remember this thing the major awardees are these three so do memorize these three as very uh, diligently so this question is really very important from your international news section of spotlight magazine so do listen to me very carefully with which country has nasa signed gateway treaty for establishing lunar gateway space station so recently this gateway treaty has been signed by the nasa with a country so it is canada so canadian space agency has signed this gateway treaty with nasa now this gateway treaty has has three major provisions and what are these three provisions so these are the three provisions that are there in this gateway treaty or basically we can say that gateway treaty is nothing but a summation of these three motives so what are what are these three motives first is the artemis 2 mission so what is this artemis mission you must have heard about this mission a lot which was announced last year by nasa so planning on this mission was uh, was done a long back ago but it was in the news from last year very much now this artemis mission is the mission of nasa to send the first women and the second men on moon so first man was sent to the moon in 1969 during the apollo mission neil armstrong was the first person now nasa is aiming to send the second person on moon as well as the first women to the moon through this artemis mission part 2 now what is this part 2 what about the part 1 so artemis part 1 is the unmanned mission so this part 1 is expected to be launched in november 2021 and it is going to be the unmanned mission to check the viability of the spacecraft and this artemis 2 is expected to be launched in 2023 and if any delay occurs then the most probable year by which this mission is going to be launched is 2024 so for now it is 2023 so under this gateway treaty a canadian is going to become a part of this artemis 2 mission so this is the first provision of this gateway treaty that a canadian a canadian will participate in this artemis 2 mission which is for first sending first women and the second men on moon second is lunar gateway space station so under this gateway treaty a space station like the international space station will be created on the moon's orbit so what would be the purpose the purpose is first for exploration and second for tourism so in order to explore moon more this space station will be established by the us and canada apart from this the third provision of this gateway treaty is canadrum Three. So this is a robot which will be developed by Canadian government, and that robot will be sent to this lunar gateway for its upkeep, for maintaining the entire system of this lunar gateway space uh, station. So this robot will be provided by the Canadian Canadian government to the NASA. So these are the three provisions of this gateway treaty which you have to remember. because this is an important question from your uh, examination point of view now my question for you is that who is the chief of nasa so this is your task to find out and tell me in the comment section below and here the end to this session has come and i would like to take a leave from you but if you have enjoyed this session then do share it with your friends and 
uh, do watch it for tomorrow as well thank you so much